Before the break, we discussed the formulation part of the business strategy or strategic business planning. We embodied within the formulation the concepts of marketing plan and the elements of the marketing plan, and we tried to calibrate that marketing plan, the formulation within the overall broader spectrum of a strategic business plan. One of the things we covered there was that it's important when we're formulating not to involve ourselves into implementing, separating the implementation away from the formulation and indeed the evaluation which we get to later on. In this concept, in this se section, we're going to develop the concept of implementation. Again, the implementation or an operational plan could on its own be a quite a significant large documentation and there are myriads of project planning open source and proprietary software that deal with that. Implementation sector segment portion of a strategic business plan needs to again be calibrated within that plan. So again, not to provide fatigue or with, from the planner's perspective or from the reader's perspective coming from formulation and marketing into implementation and finance. So again, we're going to describe that with that um, objective in mind that we are actually looking at this implementation program within a strategic plan, a business a strategic plan. What a strategic business plan is not is a budgeting exercise, is a detailed operational exercise. Strategic business plan in this formulation, in this implementation and evaluation is a broad perspective of what the company is going to do and how they're going to do it. It then cascades into budgeting in this financial sector, it cascades into project management in this implementation, and it cascades to other parts of the business in its formulation. On its own, it needs to be preserved as a useful document, otherwise it becomes, if you like, too top heavy and prohibitively large. Let's go to implementation. There are two uh, broad aspects of an implementation program within our methodology. One is the elements of the business activity that we want to do in a routine fashion. We embody those in processes, procedures, and the communication. Let's call them PPC. A process is different to a procedure in our terminology. A process is what you do, when you do it, by whom. What is the routine activity? What is its periodicity, regularity, by what function? What to do, when, how often, by whom? When you decide this process, when the planner decides on the process, what to do, when to do, by whom, then the question of how to do it is a procedure. So a procedure attaches itself to a process. The complication arises for the cases that, are this, that are this I and my fellow scholars have seen is that when, we, when the planner tries to combine the process and procedures into one document, into one embodiment, which makes it too complicated. So process is what to do, how often, by whom. Procedure is that when that happens, how to do it. Process can be, as you can see, quite in a diagram fashion. Majority, if not all the processes in the business and commerce environment are closed loop. Where you, when the process finishes, it needs to go back where it starts. In engineering and physics, these kind of closed loops are called server systems. You can do your research on that, which means that it's self-correcting. An automatic pilot system on an airplane is a server system. It corrects itself, knows the coordinates of destination. If the wind comes, if there is a environmental uh, uh, position that it moves the plane away, the service system corrects itself by reducing the power of one of the engines and moving the pitch of the, of the wing and so forth. The same thing applies in business strategy. When you create processes in businesses, it always has to be closed loop service systems. Now there are open loop processes that are applicable to other elements of our activities and endeavors, but not in business. So process, what to do, how often, periodicity, by what function. Procedure that attaches to these processes, it's different. It doesn't need to be in diagrams. It could be like this diagram. They are descriptive. There are dot points, uses a lot of language, uses a lot of diagrams, simplified, how to do it. Procedures are often written by those people who are responsible for doing it. 
in terms of manufacturing. The procedures written by those people who operate the machine. They've got the first hand knowledge of the procedure. Process is often written by the management as to what to do, when to do. Process procedure. Then there's the third element of our first column of our implementation, being process and procedures, is communication. Somebody needs to communicate to somebody, function to function, about these processes and procedures. Communication itself has some elements in our, system, in our, in our, in our way of thinking. Firstly, the communication needs to explain the desired outcome very clearly to the recipient. It's the recipient's right to explain and accept that they understood the desired outcome. The resources in terms of recipients, level of skills, knowledge, available time, require other requirements need to be determined. The regularity of reporting needs to be determined and the feedback outcome needs to be reported. Conversely, it is the instructor's right at the end to determine if the recipient provided the desired outcome of the recipients. So at the beginning of the communication process, desired outcome, assessment of the skills and the time and requirements available. If, for instance, it's deemed that the recipient doesn't have a full knowledge and is not ready for the full responsibility of the communication, there will be more regular reporting. If there is deemed that the person, recipient, has got full knowledge, there will be less reporting. Famous example, a four-star general in the military discusses a position with a three-star general. There's not much details because they are at the level they both understand it. As it cascades lower and lower within the military ranks, there's more and more detail and more and more regularity of reporting. So the first element of our implementation methodology is the regular things that needs to be done and encapsulated in processes, which I describe what that means, in procedures, which are how to do things, and in communication, the interface. Within this interface of process, uh, interface of communication, procedures, how to do things, and processes, we need to understand uh, per, and perhaps incorporate another element. Some of these processes and procedures are generic. And every company needs them. We need to have a marketing process. So how, how often do we go to the market? What do we do? How do we check our sales in our finance sector? How often do I look at our cash flow or profit and loss statement once a month? What report needs to be done? Procedures needs to be done. Some of our specific. So you've got gen generic processes and procedures and communication mechanisms that have to be present in most of businesses and some specific ones which are peculiar to that business. But they embody the regular activities. Remember in yesterday when we spoke about flow diagrams, coordination, games, intuitive thinking, in business processes, procedures, and communication in the manner that I described, embody that theoretical concept. Within process, procedures, and communication, generic or specific, there's another element that I would like to share with you, particularly this is applicable to the, to the communication part of PPC. And that is responsibility versus accountability. Responsibility is when a person directly is responsible for a task, for a service, for part of the process and procedure. Accountability is when typically with a higher level management where you are not day to day responsible, but you're still accountable. One of the things you need to be cautious in terms of communication part of procedure, procedure, process, procedure, and communication is not to absolve or abdicate accountability. I'll give you an example perhaps clarifies the situation. Let's say there is a difficult political situation and soldiers, they've been given some responsibilities and things get hot on the street and a soldier shoots one of the demonstrators. Okay, that soldier is responsible for that decision. But it's the general and perhaps the defense minister who has to resign from their position because they're accountable for what happened. So we need to embody accountability, which is more directed with vision, with directorship that I described in the previous sessions, and responsibility, which is more resp associated with management, mission. They have to be preserved within our communication. Regularity of reporting it depends on the skills of the recipient, and it cascades down. More you cascade, more regularity of reporting. Higher, fewer regularity of reporting. However, accountability and responsibility are preserved. Procedure tells us how to do things graphically, 
textually, and process says diagrammatically how, sorry, what, when, and how. That's the first body, first column of implementation in each business. There is another body that goes in parallel with it, almost like a branch. Processes and procedures, routine actions, building resources. Now these programs essentially are similar to your process and procedures and communication, but there are finite term programs. There's something specific that we need to do to build capacity. They're step change programs. Where do they come from? Why do we need them? They either come from your formulation. Remember in the formulation we said don't do anything about implementation if something comes out of risk or competitive analysis? This is where we address it. Out of implementation, I'm sorry, out of formulation, marketing management, some elements might come off the risk issues. Some elements might have come off your five forces analysis. Some elements might come off your competitive analysis. You've got to do something about it. You create these capacity building programs. One of the step changes. These resemble cooperative games, stock variables, rigorous thinking in our yesterday's fashion, as opposed to routine processes and procedures and communication, which is flow variables, coordination games, intuitive thinking. You don't need to worry about those at this stage, but you perhaps keep it in the back of your mind as a theoretical standpoint. These programs required either because of those critical factors that come from formulation, and uh, indeed more importantly, where as part of our formulation, when we look at external environment and internal capacities, we find a mismatch. We want to do something in our external environments. We haven't got the resources. We haven't got the capabilities. Let's build them, build the programs here, here. Not in the process and procedures, here. Step change programs. Conversely, we might have some internal resources that we haven't leveraged out into the real world. Build the program to attain external marketing opportunities to leverage our internal resources. One thing we need to be mindful of um, is that either with the column one, routine actions, process, procedures, communication, and with column two, resource building, one of the step changes, we need to be mindful not to do two things, perhaps. One is, for the first column, you don't need processes and procedures and communication for things that are just so regular that it will just suffocate the business. Indeed, not more than 65 to 75 percent of your business activities need to be associated or described within processes, procedures, and communication. About 30, 35 percent of your business should be let free. Your employees should be let free. Let it just work. We don't need a processes and procedures and communication mechanism to say we're going to turn the factory lights on every morning. There is a skill in planning to remain within the corporate discipline and at the same time not to suffocate the business and leave that virility entrepreneurship. So with processes and procedures and communication, one thing is to make sure it's no more than 75%. Let the, let the rest be indeterminate. With capacity building programs, the step changes, be mindful that the cost and the resources associated to those must not exceed more than 15% of your available cash flow, your resources, 15% of available activities. Otherwise, they will be too top heavy and they will sink the business. Building too much capacity while sinking the cash flow of a business, it's not clever and I think you all agree with me. So there's in terms of quantum and scalability of these two, that's important to consider as well. Therefore, implementation programs here and here embody the what's come out after formulation. What we also might include in a business plan are general operational stuff that might be of useful um, help uh, in, in terms of understanding the strategic implementation uh, activities of the business. Most of the plans when they go wrong is because the implementation is poor. Most of the plans are not used and people just do them because the bank asks for them or the board asks for them and after the, as soon as that's finished, they go under the bottom drawer and never looked at. It's because of not of value in terms of implementation. Implementation in this way becomes of value because you can attain, you can attach people's bonuses to these step change programs. You can attach the salary of and incentivization of to these uh, people or personnel to these processes and procedures and communication. 
if the implementation is of real value, the plan comes off the bottom row, sits on people's table, and they go with the strategic direction. They implement the management alongside the strategic direction. 